Hello, I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power systems. Today we will discuss on condensers. Uh, condensers are a very important component of any uh, steam power generation system which works on Rankine cycle. If I draw this steam power generation on Rankine cycle. One, two expansion, two to three, and three to four, and four to five. If you remember this diagram, then one to two, state two. At state two, the steam enters the condenser, and the condensate is removed at state three. Now, for steam power generations, there are two devices. One is a steam turbine, and another is a steam engine. If we draw the PV diagram of a steam engine, it is something like this state 1 to state 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 0. The ideal PV diagram for a steam engine, if you look at this side, this, this process is PV raised is equal to constant or PV raised to power 1.1 is equal to constant. If you look at the fag end of the, this is a reciprocating machine, the steam engine is a reciprocating machine. So, if you look at the fag end of the, in fact, this curve is much flatter on this side. So, if you look at the fag end, if we maintain the vacuum, let us say vacuum of uh, uh, 50 bar, 50 uh, kilo Pascal or 0.5 bar, in that case, this part of the stroke will generate very little amount of uh, energy and power this power loss due to friction will be substantial. So, that is why in steam engines normally the condensers are not used the steam is come steam comes out of the cylinder at a slightly higher pressure that is approximately 1.1 bar or 1.1 atmospheric. So, that it can go to the atmosphere. However, in the case of a steam turbine, because a steam turbine is a rotary machine and it is used for high power generation. The order of power generation is very low in case of a steam engine if you compare with the steam turbine. So, in a steam turbine, if we can maintain vacuum in the condenser, more power can be generated because the, 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 the work of turbine is nothing but H1 minus H2 we keep on increasing the uh, sorry we keep on decreasing the pressure in the condenser we will be getting more power here but the issue is to what extent we can reduce the pressure can we go absolute vacuum that is not possible or even say uh, vacuum of 0 0.05 or 0 0.95 bar that is also not possible because in the condenser heat has to be removed and normally in condensers heat is removed with the normal water which is available at the site and the water temperature is normally approximately we can say up to 25 degree centigrade or 30 degree centigrade right and for heat removal at least temperature difference of 10 degree centigrade has to be maintained i am giving just approximate values so the steam temperature should not be less than 40 degree centigrade Corresponding to that pressure, that pressure, uh, saturation pressure, we can expand the steam, <laughs> right? And definitely, the condensers in a in a plant improves the efficiency because we are getting more power, right? So output is increased. Efficiency is also increased. If you look at the Carnot efficiency, it is. 1 minus T L over T H. So, by putting the condenser, we are reducing the T L lower temperature. So, efficiency is also increased, efficiency of, of the uh, cycle is also improved. Once output is increased, steam com consumption is reduced. So for the same output, less amount of steam will be required in the system. Number 3 is thermal stresses. Thermal stresses in the boiler are also in reduced because 
if the boiler takes the water from uh, available at the site which is at, at 25 or 30 degree centigrade and in another case the boiler is getting water at higher temperature 40 or 45 degree centigrade definitely temperature differential will reduce and that will reduce the thermal stresses in the boiler itself. And it is also helpful in economy of the water uh, uh, softening plant because this water is circulated. So, softening plant will be less frequently because it will be required only for the makeup water. Makeup water is approximately 1.5 percent of the water circulated in the cycle. So, the load on the water softening plant is also reduced. Normally, water cooled condensing unit is used for uh, uh, power plants. So, it consists of a closed vessel, the condenser is a closed vessel and it is a sort of heat exchanger. Normally, shell and tube type of heat exchanger is used in the power plants. In shell and tube type of heat exchanger, there is a big shell and it is fitted with a bundle of tubes. Cooling water is circulated in the bundle of tubes when high temperature is steam. I will draw only one, one, one tube, but there is a bundle of tube. When high temperature is steam comes into the contact with the surface of this tube, heat is subsequently transmitted to the cooling water which is flowing inside the tube. And steam gets condensed and it is removed, and the volume of steam is drastically reduced. Say at 0 0.1 bar. I will give you some figure at 0 0.1 bar, the specific volume of the steam is 19.9 meter cube per kg. But when it is condensed, it is reduced to 1.016 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube per kg. So, there is a drastic reduction in the volume itself and the volume is reduced, a small pump fitted at the outlet of the condenser will increase the pressure. Because in the Rankine cycle, if you look at temperature entropy, the 3 to 4, this is compression of water. And because it is a liquid, water is in a liquid state or condensate in a liquid state, the change in volume is <laughs> insignificant and the pressure is increased and this high pressure water is sent to the boiler for heat exchange. So, that is <laughs> another benefit. Now, other component of say this is one. So, there is a cooling water pump in a condenser, number one cooling water pump. which is used for circulation of cooling water in the vessel. So, there is a tube. So, for the circulation of cooling water, there is a cooling water pump in a, in a condenser. Number two, there is a feed water pump, feed water, feed water to boiler. So, another pump is connected to the condenser is a feed water pump. Tisra is cooling tower. Cooling tower is required because this water either we have once through system, water is entering from this side, drained from that side, then fresh water is entering from this side, then huge water will be required. I will <laughs> give you the idea that 60 percent of the heat is rejected here, it is huge. 60 percent heat of the cycle is rejected in the condenser and water cooling water requirement is approximately 5 to 8 kg per kilowatt hour. Then you can imagine the quantity of water required for 1 megawatt or 100 megawatt plant. So, therefore, the water has to be recirculated, right. So, when the heat is taken away from the water, it goes to the, if the heat is taken away by the water from steam, it goes to a cooling tower, right. In cooling tower, temperature of water is reduced. But cooling tower has also limitation. I mean, normally when we design a cooling tower, it is designed for delta T is equal to 10, 7 to 10 degree centigrade. So, water flow rate because Q is equal to M C P delta T for water. So, mass flow rate should be adjusted in such a way that delta T does not exceed 10 degree centigrade. So, that is why huge water is required in uh, 
condensers for a power plant. Now, type of condensers, there are mainly two types of condensers. One is jet condenser, another is surface condenser. So, there are two types of condensers, jet condenser and another type is surface condenser. What I was explaining to you was a is, is about surface condenser, but in jet condenser mixing of cooling water with the steam takes place. So, when the fresh water is available or clean water is available in abundance, only in those places or only those sites the jet condensers can be used. Now, jet condensers are further classified low level jet condenser and number 2 is high level jet condenser or barometric. barometric jet condenser. Now, in low level jet condenser agar they are uh, classified parallel flow, counter flow and then parallel flow. So, surface con the condensers classified mainly broadly classified in two, <coughs> two classes low, uh, low uh, level uh, sorry jet condensers and surface condensers and jet condensers are further classified as <coughs> low level counter flow and parallel flow and high level or barometric condensers. Now, for a, a low level condenser, there is a container shell and at the top air suction pump is required, air suction. right? And it has a converging section, then there is a lag, oh, okay, I will reduce the height. So, there is a converging section, then there is a lag which is and this is filled with water, this area is filled with water and from here the, the condensate is sent to a a tank, in tank a certain level is maintained, certain level of water is maintained, so that there is no there is no overflow. In order to maintain a water level, a, a pipe is provided like this, so whatever overflow is there it goes to the pipe and then from pipe it goes to the cooling pond, there is a cooling pond, it goes to the cooling pond it goes to the polling board. From here, the water enters to this container and from here again it is pumped to the boiler, right. Now, <laughs> regarding steam, steam enters from this side. So, steam enters from this side, right. And from here, the water goes, enters in the shell, it is by thermosiphon only because vacuum is created here. So, the water level rises and it enters the shell from here. And water spray takes place from here the water spray takes place and there are number of trays for breaking the water droplets and steam enters from the bottom, steam comes in the contact with the water, this is steam which is entering from the bottom, it comes in the contact with the water coming from the top and the mixture goes to the leg of the jet condenser and subsequently it is sent to the uh, boiler. This is a counter flow type of low level jet condenser because steam and the water they flow in opposite direction. A certain amount of air is always dissolved in water. So, this air is sucked by air suction pump. Now, in counter flow the things are different. In counter flow steam enters from the top, 
there is only change in arrangement. So, now we will discuss about the parallel flow. In parallel flow, the stream enters from the top. Instead of water suction, there is a entry of steam from the top, right? And water is not injected from here, it is injected somewhere here. And, and they flow in a parallel direction, this, this is a stop, this is not there, only this is for extraction of air, air extraction. So, in counter flow the air was extracted from here, in parallel flow air is extracted from here and mixture of air and sorry mixture of steam and water they flow in the same direction that is why it is known as parallel flow type of arrangement. But the counter flow type of arrangement is more efficient than uh, the parallel flow type of arrangement. Now, we will discuss about high level of jet condenser. In high level jet condenser, again there is a vessel and the tail of this vessel or this leg, the height of this leg is more than the water column equivalent to 1 bar of pressure. That is, uh, the height is approximately more than 10.36 meters it is equivalent to 1 bar pressure. So, when it is put into the sump, okay, water, when it is put into the sump, water does not rise up to here. So, it rises up to, normally it rises up to the height of uh, approximately 9 meters, approximately up to the height of 9 meters and vacuum is clear. So, the benefit of this vacuum is that it the entire system works on a very low pressure. So, uh, more energy can be extracted when it is connected to the turbine and from here it goes to the water goes to the slump and from this slump there is a pump which pushes water into the vessel. Earlier in, in previous case in low level there was no pump, pump was not required to transmit water into the shell, but here a pump is required to transmit water which is available here into the shell and when the water is transmitted to the shell, so they are baffles, right. Baffles are used for a proper mixing of uh, steam, steam enters from this side. So, it is basically a counter flow arrangement, steam enter from this side in the, in the, in, in the shell and air is removed from the top rest of the arrangements are same. So, this is uh, the schematic arrangement of high level of uh, uh, this uh, jet condenser, but normally in the power plants surface, surface condensers are used. In surface condensers normally shell and tube type of condensers are used. In a shell and tube type of condenser as I explained earlier, there are I mean, if you classify shell and surface condensers or then there is downflow, downflow type, central flow type condensers and inverted flow type or number of passes, single pass or multi pass. It can be 2 pass, 3 pass, 4 pass, I we call it multi pass. So, in a shell and tube type of condenser, necessarily there is a shell, right, and it has bundle of tubes. This is end cover of the shell, end cover of the shell, and uh, there are chambers. Water, sorry, steam enters from the top steam and it leaves from the bottom condensate, right. And there are number of tubes here, and 
and uh, water flows inside these tubes, water flows inside these tubes, there is a bundle of tubes, there are bundle of tubes and cooling water enters from this side, this is all, they are all tubes. So, cooling water enters from this side, right, passes through these tubes, takes a turn and then passes again, passes through these tubes and leave from this side. So, it is a two pass uh, surface condenser, right. And uh, this coolant which is coming out of the condenser, it again goes to the cooling tower and it gets condensed, gets cooled down. There is always uh, dissolved air in the steam. So, when the steam get condensed, the air is liberated, right. And it is accumulated close to the tubes of the uh, condenser normally. So, air has to be removed frequently from the condenser. So, air ejector pumps are used. So, there are two types of arrangement, dry type of vacuum arrangement and, and, and wet type of vacuum arrangement. Wet type of vacuum arrangement, the steam, the steam is also sucked along the air or condensate is also sucked along the air. But in dry type of arrangement, only air is served out of the condenser. So, a dry vacuum type of surface condenser, if I want to show schematically, it is going to be a vessel consisting of number of tubes, exhaust steam plus air coming from the top, right, getting condensed and removed from the bottom. In this type of condensers, baffles are provided for suction of air. So, this is a dry type of uh, uh, dry type of vacuum system where only air is served out of the condenser vessel. In central flow system, there is a central flow system where there are number of tubes and steam flows radially inward and air is served from the center of the bundle. Okay. So, this type of arrangement is known as centrally central flow type of surface condenser. Now, in a condenser there is always mixture of air and water, right. And as per the Dalton's law, the total pressure is the partial pressure of water and partial pressure of air that is Dalton law for non-reactive mixtures. But volume of the shell is equal to we can say mass of the air specific volume of the air is equal to mass of the steam specific volume of the steam, right. Total mass in the vessel is mass of the air plus mass of the steam is equal to mass of the steam 1 plus mass of the air divided by mass of the steam is equal to mass of the steam 1 plus specific volume of air uh, mass of the steam mass of the air, specific volume of steam divided specific volume of air, right. <coughs> now, in a condenser, if you do the heat balance, steam is coming from the top. The, the, out of the total heat of the steam, part of the heat is taken away by the cooling water, TCI. TCO and with some certain mass flow rate, so it is MCP delta T, right. And part of the heat is going with the condensate, mass of the condensate, right, and enthalpy of the condensate, right. And air plus steam are also ejected from uh, uh, the condenser because air has to be sucked out. So, part of the heat is also going with the air plus steam coming out of here, right. So, initially we will consider air only. So, suction is taking place and air is coming out of here. If you do, we do the an energy balance, then this is state 1, let us say this is state 1. So, mass of the steam at state 1, H of the steam state 1 plus mass of the air state 1, enthalpy of air state 1. 
that is the total energy which is entering the vessel right is equal to heat transfer q plus this is heat transfer q plus mass of the steam 2 enthalpy of the steam 2 plus mass of the air 2 enthalpy of air 2 this is air plus steam right now remaining part is going with the condensate mass of the condensate and enthalpy of condensate 3 it is 3 this is the total energy balance now mass of the air whatever mass is entering it is leaving the vessel temperature of air is also constant because steam is getting condensed so it is getting condensed as at constant temperature so both are equal they can be cancelled out because while doing the analysis it is often asked why you have not considered the air the heat heat carried away by the air or heat coming in with the air in the air in the vessel so they are cancelled out <laughs> so mass of the steam enthalpy of the steam minus mass of the condensate enthalpy of a condensate is equal to q right so this heat which is taken away by the cooling water is the enthalpy difference of this steam entering from this side and condensate leaving from this side air does not come into the picture now we can further say that this is this enthalpy it is a condensate can be in in a, in a liquid state or sometimes it is a subcooled liquid also but for a properly designed condenser a condenser has to be I mean should not have any subcooled liquid inside a condenser should not this is, that is called a poor design of the condenser condenser should take away only latent heat from the condensing vapor right so <coughs> so this uh, hc3 can be calculated so all these things can be taken from all these properties can be taken from the uh, uh, steam table and we can find the value of q now regarding this we will uh, solve one numerical that will give us clear cut idea about this. Now, in this numerical, the barometric reading is 760 millimeter of mercury, it means the pressure at the site is atmospheric pressure, and vacuum in the condenser is 700 millimeters of mercury. Vacuum is uh, 700 meters of mercury means the pressure below the atmospheric pressure. So, this is suppose 0 pressure, this is atmospheric pressure or 760 mm. So, if the vacuum is 700 mm, it is 700 below the 760 mm. So, absolute pressure is 70 mm of mercury, right. Mean condenser temperature is 35 degree centigrade, hot well temperature 30 degree centigrade, mass of cooling water is 45,000 kg per hour, intake water temperature 17 degree centigrade outlet water temperature 31 mass mass of condensate 1200 kg per hour okay these are the figures so initially corresponding to 35 degree centigrade right corresponding to 35 degree centigrade saturation pressure is 5.629 kilopascal so there is a correction it is not 70 it is 60 mm because 760 minus 700 is 60. So, P s is this. Now, corresponding to this 7 into 1.013 divided by 76, it comes around 7.997 kilo Pascal, right. So, the pressure in the condenser is 7.997 kilo Pascal. Saturation pressure corresponding to this is 5.629 kilo Pascal, right. It means there is some air and partial pressure of air is difference of these two. So, partial pressure of air is going to be the uh, difference of these two and it is going to be 2.368 kilo Pascal. 
because partial pressure of air plus partial pressure of steam is equal to total pressure inside the condenser. So, mass of the air we can calculate is equal to P V over R T right. Volume we can take one <coughs> right pressure because pressure is uh, pressure of the air we can take from here to R for air is 0 0.287 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and temperature is 273 plus 35 right and this will give the mass of the air as 0 0.02679 meter cube per kg right. Now, steam is undercooled to 29 degree centigrade or uh, 30 degree centigrade ok. So, Q is equal to mass of the cooling water. So, Q is mass of the condensate and enthalpy of the condensate. So, once we have the enthalpy of condensate, now we do not have enthalpy of condensate because we do not know the state of the condensate because the vapor which is entering the condenser is a wet vapor. So, <coughs> at 30 degree centigrade we will refer the steam table at 30 degree centigrade we will take the properties of steam this is H f plus x H f g. So, it is mass q is equal to mass of the condensate H s 1 minus H w c. Now, H s 1 is 146.63 we have taken from here uh, 146.63 at 35 degree centigrade plus quality 2417.87 that is latent heat minus 125.73 that is the uh, enthalpy of saturated liquid at 30 degree centigrade because uh, the condensate is subcooled to uh, 30 degree centigrade. Now, from here uh, now we need to have the value of Q, Q is equal to 45,000 kg per hour right multiplied by 4.18 into 31 minus 17 and this we can take 36. This is the Q is in kilowatts and Cp delta D. Now, once we calculate the Q from here we will put the value of q here and we will get the value of x right. Uh, achha, okay, one thing more it is kg per meter cube not meter cube per kg ok. Mass of the air is kg per meter cube ok. So, q is first of all what we have done q is equal to heat taken away in the uh, in, in the condenser is mass of the condensate enthalpy of entering steam and th or sensible heat of leaving condensate right. Enthalpy of entering steam we do not know right. Uh, this sensible heat of condensate is known to us because it is uh, the saturated enthalpy of the liquid at 30 degree centigrade. Q is not with us, Q we have taken from M C P delta heat that heat is taken away by the cooling water and from here by putting this value here we will get the value of x and the value of x is 0.9 right this is the state of steam which is entering the condenser. Now, vacuum efficiency is now vacuum efficiency is defined as for any condenser is equal to actual vacuum divided by ideal vacuum. So, actual vacuum divided by ideal vacuum right. Now, actual vacuum is how much? 60 millimeters of mercury or into uh, 1.013 by 76 bar or multiplied by 100 then it is kilo Pascal right divided by ideal and what is the ideal? It is this 5.629. 5.629 and this is 0 0.975 is equal to 97.5 percent. This is the vacuum efficiency of the condenser. Undercooling, condenser undercooling is 
because vapor is at uh, available at 35 degree centigrade and it is subcooled to 30 degree centigrade so it is subcooling is 5 degree centigrade it is obvious from the data in the numerical and condenser efficiency now condenser efficiency is the temperature rise in the cooling water divided by maximum possible temperature rise so temperature rise in cooling water is 31 minus 17 and maximum possible because temperature rise in cooling water cannot be more than 35 degree centigrade because 35 degree centigrade is the temperature of condensing steam so it is 35 minus 17 there is one more correction here this is 760 760 mm because this is in millimeters so this has to be in millimeters right and now let us go back to this uh, uh, volumetric efficiency this is going to be 14 by 18 it is going to 0 0.78 or it is 78 percent so efficiency of the condenser is 70 78 percent volumetric efficiency we have calculated 97.5 it volumetric efficiency is actual vacuum divided by ideal vacuum actual vacuum we have calculated from here 60 mm multiplied by 1.013 atmospheric pressure divided by 760 millimeter into 100 divided by ideal vacuum right and this all we, we got uh, solutions for all the uh, required parameters in this numerical that is all for today thank you very much